Welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Tim Miller in this week for Jerry Anderson. So glad you are joining us. Are you ready to get out and vote in August? We have a very different situation coming up in Ohio as we have a second primary election on August 2nd. And we want to know more about this and how it's going to all play out. So joining me today is Sam Nelson. He is Associate Professor of Political Science for the University of Toledo. Sam, always great to talk to you. We know that the reason we're having the second primary is because of this redistricting map in Ohio. Our lawmakers weren't able to, to reach a deal on what it should look like. So now we have to have this uh, second primary for things like the state Senate and state house races and central committee. How do you think this is going to play out? Is it going to be too chaotic for voters to figure out? Well, I think it's going to be really confusing for a lot of voters. A, they may not even realize that the primary is happening uh, because the big ticket uh, races like uh, U.S. Senate uh, and House, the ones that get a lot of attention, a lot of television advertising, a lot of mailers, those aren't on the ballot this time. We've already voted in those primaries. And, you know, it's not like you see a lot of TV ads for a state House race or get a lot of attention. So that's one thing. It's just lower profile. It's not a time of year when we're used to voting in primaries. Primary turnout's already low. And for a lot of people, it's going to be confusing because of the redistricting. They may be in a different district today than they were a year ago. And they may not even recognize the names on the ballot because they're now looking at a whole different group of politicians than what they had um, been accustomed to. So this is by far an ideal situation for voters and for these candidates who are trying to win a race. Right. And I mean, it adds a, um, a certain unpredictability and it means that some odd things might happen or unexpected things might happen in some of these races. Some of the races aren't contested, so, you know, it's 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 not as big a deal, but um, it certainly scrambles uh, the math uh, a little bit. Uh, and I think it makes it a lot harder for voters uh, to get the information they need or want uh, in order to participate in this primary. Talking with Sam Nelson from the University of Toledo. Sam, who does it benefit if turnout is poor for this August 2nd primary? Is it best for the incumbent who maybe has that name recognition? Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think name recognition is key in um, the state legislative races. Uh, low turnout uh, is going to probably benefit Republicans because their, vo their voters are older and more likely to turn out. Uh, Democratic voters tend to be younger, um, more occasional voters. I mean, we see this in midterms uh, and in primaries. And with the, the latest news is that the Ohio Supreme Court has yet again rejected the redistricting maps, uh, basically saying it's unconstitutional. How do you see this ending? What is the end game? Will we ever reach a compromise or will this just go on and on without uh, a really good and constitutional map? Well, I mean, this is the thing. We're going to be voting in November on unconstitutional maps, according to the state Supreme Court. Um, people are going to lose races that they might have won on different maps. Um, people are going to win races that they might not have won. Um, and it's kind of... Um, well, I don't know. I'm I'm a, a, a good government type. It's kind of irritating, <laughs> uh, to be honest, um, because we're gonna what we're gonna see is after the election, this is gonna be continued to be litigated, and in all likelihood, in 2024, when we vote again, we will be voting in different districts or on a different map than we are this year. And of course, the idea is that you're supposed to do this every 10 years and have stable districts, and so on. And we're gonna change now, and then we're gonna change again. Possibly in 2024, the federal courts and the U.S. Supreme Court may get involved um, because, of course, there are redistricting cases coming up in other states as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's um, it, it's kind of a chaotic thing, and it makes it very difficult for candidates to plan campaigns when we had all this uncertainty. Right. I can only imagine how hard that is to campaign. Maybe you don't even know what your district is or who your voters are. Uh, right. Turning our attention now, Sam, uh, once again, Sam Nelson from the University of Toledo talking politics with us here on Leading Edge. We have the midterm elections coming up. Normally, that is not good for the party that has uh, the, the president in the White House. How do you see things for Democrats? We know in the middle of inflation, uh, it's, do, you, do you foresee a tough time for Democrats trying to run here in, the, in these midterm elections? It does seem like it's going to be a tough environment, right? Like you say, inflation is there, um, and people notice that, right? We had a lot of press coverage of gas prices going up, and no 
coverage of gas prices going back down. Um, you know, so so that's on people's minds. It is always historically tough uh, in midterms. But you know, you could look at the example of 1998, uh, Bill Clinton second term. You would expect that to have been a Republican wave election, and they really got damaged by their um, impeachment of Bill Clinton. Uh, they were seen as extreme, and it cost them uh, a lot of races they could have won. That dynamic could play out here um, in close races. Candidate quality matters. And if you look at the U.S. Senate races, you've got some, you know, I want to be nice, but some pretty low quality Senate candidates in a couple of states uh, for Republicans. Um, that could cost them races that they could have won with better candidates. Um, abortion is going to play a huge role in the mid terms. If that wasn't uh, on the table, if that uh, if the case hadn't just come down, um, if abortion wasn't one of the issues in November, I think that would have uh, been worse news for Democrats. I think abortion being there is likely to energize Democratic voters who might otherwise not have turned out. So this is a very uh, unpredictable midterm in a lot of ways. But, you know, if I was putting money on it, which I don't because that would be, you know, bad for political scientists. But, uh, you know, I'd say, you know, Democrats are going to have a hard time, but there is a lot going on. Um, and, of course, we don't know what inflation numbers will be in September and October. And those are the ones that are going to matter uh, right. probably. Um, and Sam, we know President Biden is, is suffering from some low approval ratings, a recent Reuters Ipsos poll from this week said 59% of Americans disapprove of his job performance. Um, how does that affect the rest of his presidency going on? Obviously, inflation has a big a lot to do, a big deal to do with that. Um, there's that. There was, you know, um, Afghanistan withdrawal ended up not being popular, but, you know, um, that's that's a tough position to be in. A lot of that disapproval may be people who are were Biden voters uh, who are disappointed in uh, the failure of some of the agenda to be passed because of Joe Manchin blocking everything in the Senate. Um, every time they think they've got a deal, they block. That's very demoralizing for Democrats and for independents who lean towards Democrats. Um, that doesn't mean those people won't vote uh, for Democrats in the midterms, but it does mean that they're less likely to turn out. I think that kind of that pall of discontent is the kind of thing that keeps people at home during a midterm election. And we were hearing a lot, Sam, lately about uh, Donald Trump maybe announcing soon that he'll run again in 2024. Do you think that announcement is coming? And, and what does that do to the race? Does President Biden face off against him in two years? And what a circus that would be. Uh, yeah, I mean, anything that involves Trump is going to be a circus, right? And, um, you know, the timing is interesting. I read that a lot of Republican elected officials would really rather he didn't get in the race before the midterms because they would like to run a bunch of individual Senate and House campaigns um, based on, you know, disapproval with Biden. You bring Trump into the picture in, say, September, which is the rumor that when he might announce, and now the midterms are about Trump. And that's not where I think a lot of Republican office holders want to be, um, because that's going to energize Democrats, right? If you highlight, I mean, there are a whole bunch of Republican candidates who are election deniers, right, Who's, who say that Joe Biden didn't win the election. Um, that issue kind of simmers down if Trump is not visible during the campaign. But if Trump is visible during the campaign, that Democratic anger um, against those uh, those folks, that's that's going to be very energizing. And then you start to forget about things like, well, I didn't get the things from Biden that I was hoping for. Right. Um, now you're focused on I got to keep Trump out. It is going to be fascinating. So thank you so much. Uh, Sam Nelson from the University of Toledo joining us here on Leading Edge.